My name is Tim Shields. I'm the founder of photographyacademy.com. I'm going to show you how you can get photos that are in focus. And photos that are in focus are one of the number one struggles of photographers. So here is how I do it. So here's an example photo of Moraine Lake. And this is a particularly challenging photo because your camera is going to have a hard time knowing where exactly to place the focus point. So let's just say that your camera is in multi-point focus mode, which is where, which is the setting that uh, most cameras come in uh, when you actually buy your camera, when you take it out of the box. And so what this means is that there will be a whole bunch of these focus points. I won't take the time to draw them all, but there will be potentially a hundred of them that go right across the screen. All these little different focus points and the camera companies brag about this. They, they want to have the highest and highest number of focus points and they sell the idea that having more and more focus points will result in a sharper photo. But here's the thing. Your camera is looking at these mountains back here and they're saying, okay, there's something really far away. And then it's looking at this tree right here is, and it's saying, okay, there's something that's uh, kind of close up. And then your camera looks at all this stuff in the foreground and says, wow, there's something really, really close here. And your camera has to make this educated decision. What should we focus on? And so it goes back to its programming and it makes a decision on your behalf. And the problem with this is, is that your camera is going to decide. It may decide it's going to focus on the foreground here. It may decide to focus here and it may decide to focus here. And for whatever decision it makes, chances are in this type of landscape scenario, it's not going to be the right decision. And this is why I take control of my camera and I think you should too, and set your camera in single point focus mode. And I'll show you what this means. So now your camera has been set to single point focus and you're standing right here and you are making a decision. So now you can move the focus point. There will usually be one focus point right in the middle and with your thumb tool, you can drag this thing over so that it potentially could be right here or you could drag it down so that it could be right here. The point is that you can make that decision for what your camera is actually going to focus on. But there's another technique I'm going to show you where the single point focus point stays right here in the middle and you are going to leave it right there, but still you're going to choose where your camera is going to focus. And I call this the halfway press and hold method. And I will show you what I mean in a completely different shooting scenario. Let's meet Patches. Patches is my beloved little family dog and he needs a bit of a haircut right now, but I'm going to set him on this chair and I'm going to take a, a portrait photo of Patches with the computer monitor in the background. So you'll notice that Patches is much closer to the camera than the computer monitor is. So if the camera was in multi-focus point, then the camera would be making the decision about what's going to be in focus, the dog or the background computer monitor. So what I'm doing is I am choosing single point focus, it's in the middle, and I'm going to rotate the camera so that the single focus point is on Patches' face. Then I'm going to hold the shutter button down halfway and then move the camera back to the composition that I want and then take the picture. So that's pressing the shutter button halfway down and then holding. So take a look at the final picture here. You see that Patch's face is in focus and the computer monitor is out of focus. And then I did the opposite as well. I focused on the computer monitor so that you could see it was in focus and Patches was not in focus. So this is the technique that uses the single focus point. This is how I actually take all of my photos. I actually never use multi-focus point because I don't want to trust the camera to do it. This way I can choose to either move that single focus point around to where I want it to be or I can do the hold halfway down and hold and then recompose the shot, like move the camera and then take the photo. So that little lesson is just one of the many that are contained inside the Photography Transformation Masterclass. And really there are four pillars to photography that I teach inside the Masterclass. And to really simplify them, the pillars are 
find it, frame it, take it, retouch it. And what I mean by that is with find it, that involves research. Like you don't just run out of the house and go find an amazing photo that is just waiting to be taken. You need to find it through planning and research. And there are some specific techniques and some free apps on your computer that you can use in order to be able to find those amazing places and to know when to be there so that you are in the right time at the right place. So you get that amazing light. So that was the find it. The next one is frame it. The next pillar and frame it means knowing how to achieve a beautiful composition. Compositions are everything in photography. Uh, beautiful photos are not taken with super expensive cameras. Beautiful photos are taken when you find and know how to use the rules of composition and know how to stack one on top of each other so you're using the most rules of composition in one frame. And the frame is the cornerstone. It is literally the foundation of every good photo. So that's the frame it. That's the second pillar. The third pillar is take it. And for take it, that means you have to know your camera settings, but you don't have to know all this technical stuff. You just need to know one simple camera setting that you can use every time. And what I recommend for that is aperture priority. And when you use aperture priority and you know how to set that focus point so you will get the maximum amount of depth of field, the maximum amount of the photo will be sharp and in focus. And that is how you master and, and take control of your camera settings. So that was number three, that's take it. And then pillar number four is retouch it. That means the post-processing. That's where you put your photo into your computer or on your tablet or your phone and you add drama to your photo in the simplest possible way. This is where you paint with light and create that drama in just by painting with light on your computer screen. It's not overly technical and anyone can learn it. If this is of interest to you and you want to take your photos and really create photos that are magazine quality so that you are taking photos at the level of being award-winning photos, then I encourage you to take my free web class. It's a one hour web class. And in that web class, I tell you all about the four step system and the four pillars that I just explained. And in no time, in weeks and not years, you'll be taking your own award-winning quality photos. So click on the link that's somewhere around this video, sign up, take the free web class, and in the one hour that uh, this video lasts, I will give you my absolute best tips and tricks and advice on to how you can be taking your own award-winning photos. Take care. This masterclass is not just information, it's your photography transformation. Let's start now. Click the button now and join me for your photography transformation.